Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining us this Wednesday. As you know, uh, we have a special guest from ASIS. He's going to share how they automated Excel-based forecasting and allocation using BoardWalk. Today's speakers are Sean Baker from ASIS. He's a, de he's a demand planner for ASIS and has been with ASIS for the past three years now. He has managed the U.S. supply chain and now manages the ASIS eShop, and he still plays with stores. Then we have Yvette Kumar. He's Vice President of Sales and Strategy at BoardWalk Tech. He has over 15 years of experience um, in manufacturing, supply chain, ERP implementation, and IT consulting. He has a degree in mechanical engineering and an MBA in strategy, system, and marketing, and one of his hobbies um, include table tennis. So the way we've structured the next hour is that we're going to give you an introduction to BoardWalk, and then we're going to talk about some of the challenges that many of you face uh, with tracking and forecasting in Excel-based uh, processes. Then we're going to show you how it works, and then we're going to hand it over to our guest, Sean, from ASIS, so he can share his experience with BoardWalk. Then we'll jump into a live demo so you can see it in action, and then we will save some time at the end for Q&A. So if either one or if any of you have uh, questions for either one of our guests, uh, please submit them in the right-hand panel, and I will get to them at the end of the session. I will go ahead and hand it over to you, Vivek. Thank you, Heather. Uh, and again, a very warm welcome to all of you. Uh, we have a lot of ground to cover, so let's get started. So very quickly, as Heather was mentioning, uh, the way we have structured today's session is that for the first uh, around 20 minutes, we will uh, cover certain sections on BoardWalk, which is geared towards giving you a quick overview of BoardWalk. So let's begin. Um, so very quickly, uh, BoardWalk uh, has a product called BoardWalk Application Engine, or BAE for short. And this is a unique broad range application engine, which is primarily used to build and enhance manual based Excel processes. Uh, as you will see uh, with BoardWalk, you'll be able to connect your Excel uh, not only within your enterprise, but also many times uh, outside your enterprise with some of your uh, you know, partners like you know, your manufacturers, suppliers, uh, etc. And uh, you'll also see that uh, BoardWalk application engine is a platform. And though today we will be, uh, you know, covering mostly, uh, you know, demand forecasting um, and inventory allocation, etc. Uh, BoardWalk is extremely powerful in, in various areas as well. Uh, we have implemented uh, several processes uh, with Fortune 500 organizations in areas, uh, you know, which is as diverse, say, for example, ranging from uh, HR management to supply chain, end-to-end, -end, you know, supply chain applications. <clears throat> You know, uh, moving on, uh, the next couple of slides uh, speak to the broad range appeal of the platform. As you can see, we have customers ranging in multiple industries and vertical. Um, you know, for example, we have organizations like PricewaterhouseCoopers, uh, you know, Wells Fargo, Standard Chartered Bank, etc. in financial services domain. Uh, then we have companies like Asus, you know, uh, Apple, Cisco, Qualcomm, etc. in the high-tech domain. Uh, we also have organizations like you know, Coke, uh, you know, Heineken, et cetera, in the consumer packaged good industry. So again, the bottom line, uh, which I want you to take from this slide, is the fact that we are absolutely, uh, you know, process agnostic. We are industry and vertical agnostic. And any process which you can model in Excel, more or less, you can leverage our product to automate, streamline, and connect that process uh, to your enterprise information system. Uh, this slide here kind of captures some of the uh, you know, diverse range of applications which we have built for various customers. For example, on the top of the list, you see that we have built an entire taxation platform for PricewaterhouseCoopers, where more than 3,000 Pricewaterhouse tax consultants are leveraging BoardWalk uh, to prepare private equity and partnership taxes. Uh, you know, again, uh, we have, you know, organizations uh, in consumer electronics space like Apple, which is using very us very heavily uh, in the supply chain, chain domain, especially in the areas where they need to collaborate, say, for example, with some of their contract manufacturers, partners, uh, which kind of extend outside their organization's, uh, you know, firewall. And again, uh, you know, uh, in the manufacturing industry, we have, you know, organizations like Rockwell, and as I was mentioning, you know, in the consumer packaged good industries, we have several customers which are using us, again, for, you know, pretty diverse application ranging from joint business planning to account management. Uh, you know, incidentally, organizations like Coke, uh, you know, they use us when they are trying to, uh, say, for example, do their demand supply management with some of their key retailers like 
Safeway, Target, Walmart, etc., and they find you know our product extremely uh, you know useful and pertinent uh, when they are sharing the data across, as I was mentioning, their organizational boundary. Now moving on, uh, we have been in business for over a decade now, and what we have seen is that even though organizations have spent uh, you know tens of millions of dollars in state of the art ERP CRM applications, we still see that there are you know, huge you know, uh, Excel-based applications, and these can range from supply chain area to you know, HR management, product lifecycle management, et cetera. And again, this is a, a very small subset of the processes which we find uh, where organizations are still leveraging Excel. And you know, based on our experience, what we have also seen is that there was some uh, discussions within these organizations four to five years ago, maybe earlier, whether to embrace or replace Excel. That debate uh, we see has been you know, comprehensively settled now. Organizations do acknowledge the fact that Excel will continue to be an important component of their information management system. And this is where uh, we believe that Boardwalk helps these organizations because even though Excel is a great uh, you know, tool, but you know, it lacks some of the enterprise quality checks and balances. It lacks some of the data persistence, um, you know, scalability, et cetera. And that is where you will see uh, in my presentation and also uh, when Sean speaks, you know, how Boardwalk is able to mitigate and overcome many of these challenges which we see uh, in these organizations. So um, let us very quickly dive into what we see, uh, some of the core challenges uh, when organizations implement these processes in Excel. Uh, for example, if you look at this slide here, you know, this kind of captures uh, at a very high level what are uh, some of the uh, Excel lag related issues. So if you typically see the way any Excel process gets initiated into organizations that uh, you know, typically a decision maker requests certain data, and that you know, kind of you know, creates a chain of events where sometimes you know, analysts will create uh, an, uh, you know, some model in Excel which they will you know, email to their uh, respective uh, you know, departments or participants who need to enter this data uh, in these Excel files. Uh, that creates a lot of uh, issues with respect to you know, file version control, uh, you know, email issues, a large size uh, of data, etc. And typically, once the participants, when they enter their information, they again resort to uh, email to share their information back uh, with, say, for example, the uh, you know, headquarters or head of department, or even sometimes the team of analysts, who again spend a considerable amount of time you know, consolidating all this information from multiple sources, sometimes you know, different departments, sometimes even with outside organizations like, say, your uh, you know, manufacturers, suppliers, et cetera. Uh, and then again, after they consolidate this information, they represent it uh, to the managers. And every time the cycle kind of uh, repeats and iterates itself, uh, and as you can see, this is an extremely manual process, extremely uh, you know, time consuming and challenging. We see multiple issues with, uh, within these processes where you know, there are errors associated with, um, you know, sometimes user oversight, people, you know, doing copying, pasting error, many times overwriting the formulae, etc. So, uh, you know, though the number which we are showing here is somewhere around four to eight weeks of lag, which we see because of this very sequential nature of information sharing, uh, this is, these are very conservative numbers, you know, in reality, we see that, you know, these numbers tend to be even higher. Uh, <clears throat> and, uh, you know, this process, again, you know, as you can understand, uh, because of the manual nature of uh, you know this kind of operation, you know people resort many times to some kind of document management system like you know SharePoint or Documentum, and that has its own challenges. Where, say, for example, uh, many times you know any of these document management systems, because they are primarily file-based system, they force people to check in, check out. That adds to the sequentiality of the process, where somebody has logged out the file, people cannot then edit that file if they make copies then it creates multiple versions of the you know file merging that information again that becomes a challenge so there is a whole set of problems associated with you know this kind of uh, this nature of information exchange and which leads to what we call the excel chaos in these organizations now uh, the same uh, problem if you look at say for example uh, pictorially so what we have tried to capture in this slide here is that as certain parameters in the organizations for example as the number of people, regions, or iterations, as they start to increase, the impact it has on time, effort, resources required in managing these Excel-based processes. 
you know, as we saw that as these parameters, some of these parameters, as they start to increase, there is a huge, you know, process lag in these processes. Uh, many times we also see uh, a lot of coordination effort being expended in managing these uh, Excel-based processes. On top of that, we also see that there is very poor data accuracy in many of these Excel processes, primarily because many times the source of the data might be residing in some other you know, system of records, for example, your ERP system, uh, you know, if you're pulling in said item related information and a new product has been added, that becomes extremely challenging. Uh, you know, if say there are 20, 30, 40 different participants, you have created these 40 files, then you need to go ahead and add that set of information or update that set of information on multiple files. So, you know, the data accuracy becomes extremely suspect. And because of that, the efficacy of the decision making where, you know, many times, uh, you know, the process owners, they depend on uh, this Excel data when they are making many of these decisions that also tend to be suboptimal. Now, uh, what I'm also showing here on the right of uh, the right hand side of my screen are some of these challenges which we spoke about. For example, as you saw, you know, these Excel based processes tend to be extremely manual and error prone. In fact, there are use cases where customers have come back and said that, you know, there are issues like when people are manually entering the data, uh, you know, there are aspects of fat fingering where somebody has, you know, instead of entering 100,000 uh, worth of PO, they may have, you know, added one more zero and that becomes a million dollar purchase order which gets sent to the, uh, you know, your supplier. And by the time you realize the damage has been done. Uh, you know, again, uh, as I was mentioning earlier, though Excel is a great tool, uh, you know, it does not lend itself very easily to scaling uh, as number of people or processes as they start to increase, it becomes extremely challenging. Uh, Excel typically, you know, is not integrated to your enterprise information system. Again, you know, whenever you need to pull in information or push information from your uh, Excel based processes to either your, uh, you know, downstream processes or any other applications or even, you know, data warehouses, etc. that becomes a challenge. Uh, multi user collaboration we talked about, you know, again, uh, that becomes extremely difficult with, uh, you know, just Excel. And as I was mentioning, you know, there are a lot of gaps with respect to enterprise quality checks and balances, especially when you are emailing the file. You know, we have seen very nervous process owners because every time they need to share data with, you know, multiple roles or, say, you know, even sometimes outside their organizations, there could be some you know, confidential or, you know, company sensitive information. And every time you are sharing the file, you need to manually, you know, delete these uh, rows, columns, even sometimes sheets. And there's always a chance of some oversight happening where you can mistakenly, you know, share this sensitive information. So these are some of the high level challenges which we see uh, with Excel based processes. Now, uh, let us dive into how Boardwalk works and how by its very design it is able to, you know, eliminate uh, many of these challenges which we just spoke about. <clears throat> so if you look at my screen right now, what I'm showing here on my right hand side is one sample Boardwalk template. Uh, I'm going to call say, for example, this as a sales rep template. And on my left is another boardwalk template, which I'm going to call, say, the sales manager template. Now, as you can see, this is this is normal Excel file. We use uh, Excel as our front end, uh, and uh, you know, you will see how you know Sean will talk about some of uh, the capabilities, which becomes extremely uh, you know differentiating when specifically when you are trying to compare boardwalk with any other web page tool. Now, in addition to the Excel being UI, we also have a centralized repository of data, uh, which is, say, for example, your uh, Boardwalk database. This could either be on the cloud or it could be hosted behind your organization's firewall. Uh, and your data, because your data resides now uh, in the cloud, uh, the first thing which happens is we are able to now liberate your data from your Excel file. Uh, and this becomes extremely handy when you are dealing with large uh, set of data. For example, in absence of a product like Boardwalk, typically, you know, when we work with large organizations like say Coke or Levi's, etc., what we see that in many of these processes there could be, you know, 80,000 rows, 120,000 rows with 80, 90 columns, uh, and that makes the Excel workbook itself extremely bulky and slow. And it takes sometimes, you know, several minutes just to open the file. Or if they are trying to update certain information in these Excel files, if there are some VLOOKUPs, uh, you know, or some formulas, it takes several minutes for the control to come back. And that makes the whole user experience extremely cumbersome. 
with boardwalk you know there could be millions of records the user need not carry all these data set in their excel file the data can be residing in the central repository here in the boardwalk server and based on your need you can slice and dice this information and present it to the end user in the form and the format in which it is required so for example if you look at the sales rep template here you will see that the rows which belong to rep 1 are only those rows where uh, in the sales rep uh, you know column you have the value as rep 1 while if you look at the sales manager template you see that not only rep 1 records are present but other reps for example rep 2 3 4 etc which are reporting to this particular manager those records are also present and you know you can further add to who gets to see what say for example you can slice that information based on region where you can say hey Vivek can only see you know north america data while heather can see emia data and sean can see global data uh, or you can you know further slice this information saying within the north america zone Vivek can see certain product categories or certain account related details so you can really fine tune the information which is rendered to the user right uh, at, at the design stage and that takes care of all the access control authorization etc now in addition to that you also see that there are certain columns which are grayed out now these columns can become read only for one user they can become editable for another user and they can be totally absent from a third user's template and this becomes extremely handy when you are having multi user or multi role multi team collaboration sometimes you might be needing to collaborate with different departments or even with, say, for example, your partners outside your organizations, where you do not want them to have access to certain, uh, you know, range of data, you can, you know, either limit that information where they can just view that information but not edit it. Or many times, say, for example, if there are costing-related information, pricing-related information, payroll-related information, you know, certain roles can have access to these set of, uh, you know, data set, while other roles can be excluded from that. Now, one of the key differentiators between Boardwalk and other web-based application is also the fact is that, that because we use Excel as our front end, we allow people to work in what we call in an offline mode. So it's quite possible, for example, in our use case, where the sales rep might be traveling or he or she might get a customer location in a meeting where they may not have access to the internet. Based on the meeting, right then and there, they can you know, whip up their uh, you know, Boardwalk template like a normal Excel file, you know, update you know, there are, say, for example, forecasting numbers, uh, see what impact it has on their plan versus actual, or change their, say, pricing information, see how it impacts, you know, the net revenue or the gross margin. And based on that, you know, they can then, if they feel comfortable, you know, they can go ahead and share that information once they have access to the internet, or they can save this information locally like a normal Excel file. And once they have internet connectivity back, at that point in time, all they need to do is go ahead and hit this submit button and once the user hits the submit button it goes to the boardwalk database and it is then available to other users provided they have access to uh, you know say for example that range of data then when they hit refresh they will see that change seamlessly flowing in into their template now in addition to that just like we can pull information from uh, say for example other uh, users uh, into the boardwalk database and share it we can also pull information from other systems and application. So if you look at the bottom of my screen here, you see that um, you know, it's quite possible in our use case, say uh, the opportunity detail can be coming in from some CRM tool like your Salesforce, while your uh, you know, item related information can be coming in from certain tables like item master in your ERP system, while your pricing related information can be coming in from Hyperion. And all that can be pulled in and rendered to the user in the form and the format in which it is required by the end user. And this is what we mean when we say that your Excel gets connected uh, to your enterprise information system, where as information is evolving in different corners of your enterprise, and as they are getting updated with a click of a button now, you have the power where you can pull those changes into your template and seamlessly see you know, the latest and the greatest information uh, in, in, in your uh, you know, workbook. Now, in addition to that, what we can also do many times is that, say, for example, uh, once you have completed, say, for example, you have uh, had your consensus number, you want to push it back to any of these applications, or if you want to push it to your data warehouse on any of your reporting tools, you can you know, leverage that as well. For example, in few of our implementations, we also integrate with some of the visualization tools like Tableau, et cetera. And you know, more often than not, we also leverage boardwalk analytics 
where you can you know um, see these charts reports uh, on boardwalk now moving on again one of the key drivers and differentiators of boardwalk is the fact that boardwalk is a cell version database and what i mean by that is the fact that say for example if you click on any cell uh, within your template and you hit this cell history button you will see the value of that individual cell as it has changed over a period of time so if you look at my um, you know deck here right now you see that the value current value is maybe 147500 the value before that one was 155,000, 165,000 and so on. And we not only capture the value updates, if there are any formula changes in your template, we capture that as well. Uh, in addition to that, we also capture who updated this information. So if you see here that the last update was done by the admin user while the subsequent updates were done by rep one user here, uh, along with the date and the timestamp of when that change was done and any comment which the user made when he or she was editing that information that kind of provides other users who are participating in this process some kind of context as to why this information was updated many times you know you may update certain information and you may forget what was the background or the rationale behind that change so with this now you have a very powerful audit trail and a very powerful history feature where you are able to now see the information at its most granular level how it has changed and evolved over a period of time. Now, this also becomes extremely handy when you are trying to do any kind of, so for example, reporting, etc. Say, if you want to build any trend analysis or if you want to do any waterfall reporting, etc., you can see how your, say, forecasting numbers have changed month over month or how, how your pricing information has evolved quarter over quarter. These things can be very easily done using Boardwalk. Now, uh, what also, you know, we, we get feedback from many of our customers uh, is also the fact that People say that because of every update uh, is being logged and tracked, people see a behavioral change, uh, you know, in many of the users once they start using Boardwalk. Because as we so, say in Boardwalk that you can run but cannot hide. Because say, for example, if you have not updated the information or you updated the information yesterday, day before, everything is logged and tracked with the login credentials, et cetera, of the user who is making this change. And just like we have the cell history, you know, feature, you can also now go a level higher we can you where you can highlight any individual row and look at your row history or you can you know look at the entire table or the sheet history now uh, with boardwalk one point which i really wanted to highlight is the fact that you should start thinking of your individual rows as assembly of cells and each of these cells can be sourced in from you know different corners of your enterprise for example the value of your product related information can be coming in from your uh, you know erp systems uh, while your opportunity related details can be coming in from salesforce you know your actual details again can be coming in from your erp system and some other columns like risks etc can be updated by the end user and and that way you know many times when you need to pull information from disparate sources and show it in the form and the format uh, which might be different from the source information again boardwalk becomes a very powerful tool on top of that we also allow say for example you to access uh, you know the application from uh, different sources so you know we provide you with platform independence we provide you with you know device independence you can access the information from your mobile devices browsers uh, we also support you know mac systems etc now this slide here uh, very quickly captures uh, you know some of the uh, one use case where say for example one of our customers was using SharePoint before using boardwalk for this particular process you know as you can see in this particular slide here you know the process was extremely uh, convoluted the whole workflow was pretty complex there were multiple reviews which were needed at each stage because of the earlier problems which we talked about with respect to you know version control whether people are using the latest uh, you know, uh, information. There's very little trust uh, in data. And now the same process, once they implemented it on Boardwalk, you see that how streamlined it became. You know, the need for having those multiple reviews was totally eliminated. On top of that, you know, um, users also uh, captured some of the improvements which they saw within a couple of quarters of implementing Boardwalk, where they saw that you know, the, the whole process lead time became uh, you know, quite shortened. Uh, the workflow became extremely smooth. There's much higher visibility, etc. So with this, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hand over the session to Sean. 
uh, and I'll request him to share his experience of having used Boardwalk um, and, and, and I'll talk to you about you know um, how, it, how the journey has been. So over to you, Sarma. Hey, Vivek, how's it going? All right, let me just... There we go. All right. So hi, I'm Sean Baker. I was introduced at the very beginning. I am a demander with ASUS. I am currently working with the eShop. And for our experience with Boardwalk, um, actually, let's start off with ASUS. Who are we? We're in consumer electronics. You've probably seen our laptops around, our desktops. We got our start in motherboards back in 1989. We're constantly third or fourth in the US PC market. Um, this will also depend depending on which country because we have over 6,000 employees globally. What we needed Boardwalk for was our supply chain. Uh, supply chain has a lot of different aspects to it, which is you gotta balance the incoming inventory, manage your on-hand inventory, response to constant changing demand. And while we're doing this, we have upwards of 350 SKUs at any given time, crossing 60 accounts, and we have to maintain communication among all of your product managers, which is one team, all of your account managers, which is another team, and usually external, and all of your inside sales, which is yet another team. Our solution for this is that we hired one person to manage everything. It would be a tough job. He has to maintain communication lines amongst three different teams, one of which is almost entirely external and keep everything organized. But the reality is that one person became a bottleneck. And when he became a bottleneck, everything more or less just fell apart. It's very difficult to respond to constant changing demand when you have one person trying to do everything. So what ended up happening is we had communication breakdowns. We had a very manual process. You had to you had to request, hey, I want to see what the current current supply looks like. He would email it out. You would take a look at it. It would say, you know what, you're not giving me enough, or maybe I need something else that we weren't really planning for. You email it back to him. He organizes it on his end, sends you revised. And in theory, that works. In reality, what happens is that you end up having multiple account managers and inside sales asking for the same things at the same time. And so he has to do somewhat of a juggling act. And because of that, what typically happened is if you asked for, oh, I want units of this thing that we don't have that much of, you would get approved if you got in before someone else, which is an issue when we had to stock like brick and mortar retailers that have limited amount of shelf spots that we need to take. And maybe you're working with e-commerce that just needs to have stock in general. So this loss in communication resulted in a huge loss of opportunity. In addition to this, uh, some people were just using files that weren't the most up to date, especially when you have um, pretty short notice upside requests. So you end up having people who have a sheet that might be a week old and they're not quite aware of it and they end up shipping more than we can allow, which put us into shortage, which is an issue of now we don't have enough supply for everyone else who wanted it and now everyone's just fighting for whatever has whatever is left. And then some people shipped less than they were allowed to ship, which is a different issue and that it ends up generating customer angriness. Um, namely because, hey, you're delaying on my shipments while you're doing this, I should have units. And they're absolutely correct. And the issue is that we have outdated sheets out there that were being used. So because of this, we needed a solution. Our one person policy was not quite working. And we ended up turning over to Boardwalk. And how Boardwalk changed the scope is before Boardwalk, we had a manual process with many different files. Outdated files were being used, which as Vivek was stating earlier, is a issue of version control because you end up having people who are working on a different time scale, so not everyone's on the same page. It required one person to update everything, which was a huge bottleneck, and it was all he was doing day in, day out we were losing out on opportunity. And there was also an issue of accountability. 
like I said earlier, if say someone shipped more than they thought or more than we thought they were going to, ended up creating a shortage in the overall pool. Everyone else ends up pulling units and suddenly we ran out of units and we're not sure why. Boardwalk was our solution. The result was we had an automatic process with one file. This got to link up with our databases, which is great because we can see our incoming and can manage our actual on hand inventory. And that way we can actually figure out where are our units, when are we getting our incoming, who has demand, and who's been shipping. And the refresh button is very useful. You just have to build a habit of you log into Boardwalk, you click refresh, and that way you know you're on the most recent version. If anything looks weird to you, you need to talk to whoever's managing your system. But having said that, and it does have some peace of mind saying like, you know what, I opened this, I know I'm looking at the most recent version, there's no question about it. And on top of that, there's no bottleneck. You have multiple account managers looking at what they need at the same time, multiple inside sales working at the same time. And then on anyone who is dealing with allocation, they could be like, okay, I see all these requests coming in at the same time, but it's all spread out so I can look at it for a SKU by SKU basis to make sure that no one's being left out which also allows us to plan for better opportunity or say like, oh, you know what? I really need to prioritize this over that. And now that you get to know. Um, history cells were also useful in the section of accountability. For example, if someone approves something and you're like, you know, this is kind of weird. You could click on the cell, figure out who changed it and talk with them and figure out why they did not Usually they have a good reason on their end, but maybe they don't see the whole picture. They're just seeing things from their side. So it was very useful for us to build a better line of communication across our teams. So like I said, for what Boardwalk did for us and became a central hub, it let us know where we weren't filling in demand, which let us know that when we needed to bring in more units or bring units in faster, it let us know where our gaps were, and it allowed for more efficient reports on top of this, and also let us know if we ever had access to units, which is useful because then we don't have to air in as many units. Maybe some of them can come by C. So roles, limited access could be a good thing. And what happens when you don't have limited access to certain things is um, for us, our allocation become became somewhat of a wild west every now and then. Like I said, where you have someone working with an old version, they ship more than they think, or they ship more than they should have. What ended up happening is Let's say we have 100 units, we we're planning to ship out 90 of them. Someone comes in, takes 50 that we weren't expecting. Everyone else is trying to just scramble and grab their units. And at that point, we don't know who's getting what at what time. History was also useful because before we had Boardwalk, it took quite a lot of searching to try to figure out who shipped what. And then we had to compare it to, OK, according to this, what should they have shipped? And then, OK, why did they ship that? And then you have to ask them, and like, OK, you're using the sheet we sent you. OK, which one? Can you send it to me? I need to see what version it is. Or to walk in easy. You click on one cell, you click on history, and you get to see who's changed it. And then it becomes an easy conversation from there. In addition, um, manpower actually increased because of this. We had one person who all he was doing was consolidating everything and emailing it out. Once we had Boardwalk, it became a much smaller portion of his job, which allowed him to do more things. He was very, he was a very capable person. The issue is that before he was just given such a manual process where all of his time had to be dedicated to it or else it would fall apart. Canada was also having an issue managing their supply chain. And after they had came down here and took a look at our our system, they wanted to adopt it the same one. So we expanded our boardwalk system to Canada as well, and they're still using it to this day. This ends my section of slides, and I'm going to pass it over to Vivek. Thanks, thanks Sean. Uh, thanks for um, sharing your inexperience on boardwalk. So now let me uh, take the control back, and uh, with this, now let us. Uh, change gear a little and dive into a live demo. So let me very quickly, you know, whip up a sample boardwalk template. So, uh, you know, as you are seeing here, uh, this is a one, you know, boardwalk template which we have created. This is a relatively you know, straightforward, say for example, 
a unit forecasting opportunity management uh, template. Uh, the way uh, our templates are organized, uh, as you can see, uh, the top few rows is what we call our header section. Uh, in the header section, typically, you have some of the key buttons. Uh, for example, as Sean was mentioning, you, know, you have your submit button, the refresh button, uh, just to kind of uh, you know, delineate the submit button is used to push the information from your template into the boardwalk database. The refresh button is used to pull the information from the database uh, into your template. And then you have some of the history buttons like the cell history, row history, table history, et cetera. Uh, on top of that, you know, there are other, other buttons depending on what process requirements could be. Uh, you also see that uh, you know, the role which you have logged in as, say, for example, uh, this particular template I'm using the North America VP role. Uh, and uh, one thing which I also wanted to talk to you about is uh, there are you know, multiple layers of uh, you know, control and authorization, et cetera, which you can take in into your process. For example, uh, this section here, uh, the BU region, subregion, et cetera, this is coming from, say, the ERP system. And typically, you know, uh, in this particular model, uh, this is not uh, user editable, while if I scroll to my right, uh, you see that once I come into say uh, the you know month uh, or the or the time horizon section, uh, then again here there are certain rows which can be editable. For example, I can edit the forecast quantity, I can edit the price numbers, etc. While I cannot edit uh, you know other aspects like say for example the billing quantity, the backlog quantity, these again could be coming in from my say ERP system, etc. Now uh, you can also see that as the uh, North America uh, VP, uh, I have access to, say, multiple regions in my territory. For example, I have access to East, West, North, and South region. And I will very quickly uh, show you another role where I will say, for example, log in as Manager East. And in that role, you will see that I will have access to a much limited uh, set of data. And as I was mentioning earlier, we use Excel as our front end. So for example, once you have the template you can download it, you can just go ahead, save this file like a normal Excel file uh, and start using this template. Now let me show you how typically an end user gets initiated into Boardwalk. For example, here I'm showing you a shell template. Uh, this is the file typically which, for example, when you um, are implementing any process on Boardwalk, this is the file or the template which the user needs access to. Uh, as you can see, this is just a a one-sheet uh, workbook, and it does not contain any data uh, with it. Uh, typically, what you can do is you can either email this file one time, or you can you know upload this file on any of your uh, you know shared drives, uh, organizations portal, even some document management system for the user to access. So the bottom line is you need to give access to say for example uh, this shell file to the end user one time, and once the user has access to this file, all they need to do is now go ahead and hit this download data button. And once they do that, then you see that uh, the system or the application runs uh, a system check on their machine. For example, uh, they look for certain uh, office libraries, which ensures that they have Excel uh, installed on their machine. Uh, it looks for you know things like internet connectivity, et cetera. In case there are any issues, it'll tell you what the issue is. Uh, in my particular case, it is telling me that I'm good to download. So let me now go ahead and uh, hit on this continue to download button. Once I hit that, uh, it brings up the uh, you know, login screen. Uh, you know, again, many times in many of our projects, uh, we also enable you know, features like single sign-on, where we are able to connect with your Active Directory. Uh, and in that particular case, we to totally bypass this process. We use the user's Windows authentication mechanism uh, to authenticate that the user is genuine. In my case, let me go ahead and here now log in as uh, Manager East. And let me enter my password. So once, uh, you know, if you recall, uh, in the first template which I showed you, uh, I had downloaded that template using the North America VP role. Uh, here I'm going to, uh, you know, download the data using uh, you know, the manager East row. So let me go ahead and hit on OK button. Now, once I hit on this OK button, uh, it is, looks like I have entered some, 
wrong information. Let me just check my Let me try one more time now. Once I click OK, now it is hitting the Boardwalk server. And based on my login credential, uh, it is looking at whether I am uh, authenticated or a genuine user or not. Uh, once it you know, verifies that I'm a genuine user, then it will also look at what data set I have access to. And based on my role, it will bring in the data into my template. Now you see that it has successfully downloaded the data in a separate sheet. Uh, here in this particular instance, it has downloaded one sheet. Uh, again, depending on your process design and you know the volume of data, it can either download one sheet or ten sheets or twenty sheets. Um, and you know, as you can see, once it has now downloaded this data using the Power NA e stroll, if I come to the sub region here, if I click, you see that it has only brought in uh, the east zone data in my template. You know, as you know, Sean was mentioning earlier with respect to access control. You know, this is one of the key advantages where right at the design level you can decide who gets to see what. Uh, in addition to this, so say for example, within the East Zone, East zone uh, data, you can say you know, this particular role or user can only see certain types of customers. For example, one user can only see direct customers, other can see, say for example, channel customers or certain product line, product families, etc. So once the user has downloaded the template, they can go and save this file you know, locally uh, on their machine and then you know, as, they, as they can start using. So let me also show you how uh, easy and simple it is to start collaborating uh, and sharing information with Boardwalk. So let me now go back to my file. And as I was mentioning earlier, there are certain ranges of data which I can edit. So let me come to my uh, September number here and let me go ahead and change this number. So for example, currently the value which I'm showing for uh, the forecast quantity for this item P17, uh, it is showing me as say, for the month of September, month of September as you know, 3,850. Let me just go ahead and maybe change this to you know, 4,001. Uh, and you can see other features and functionalities of Excel you know, are intact. Where say as I change this information, uh, you know, there are certain uh, rows which are you know, formula driven. They automatically changed based on this um, you know, update of information. Uh, and as I'm making this change, as I was mentioning earlier, I need not be connected to the internet. Once I've downloaded this information and saved this file, you know, I can be in totally offline mode, you know, look at these numbers, uh, see whether I'm happy with the changes which I'm doing. And once I'm comfortable and confident of the change which I have made, at that point in time, I will go ahead and hit this submit button. So let me now go and hit the submit button and then again to refresh your memory. Once I hit the submit button, it will see from my data set which cells I have updated, and it will then take that particular, those individual cells, compress them over, and send it over to the Boardwalk database. So let me go ahead and hit the Submit button. Now once I do that, I have the option to enter certain comments. For example, let me say, this is my September forecast. And uh, I will say, okay now, uh, once I do that, now it is pushing the changes from my template into the Boardwalk server. Uh, as you can see, uh, you know, it has successfully made uh, this particular change uh, into the Boardwalk database. So this change which I did, you know, uh, just to recap, I made this change using the Power uh, uh, NA East, which is Manager East role. Let me very quickly now switch to the other template, which, is, which was the you know, VP of North America. Now I have now switched role. I'm wearing a different hat. Now in this template, uh, if I look at the product or the item number P17. And if I scroll to my right here, and if I look at the month of September, it is still showing a slightly dated value of 3,850. And that is because uh, even though uh, you know, the, the manager has changed this to 4,001, the, the VP has not yet refreshed or pulled that information from uh, you know, the Boardwalk server. That is why it is, it is still showing a slightly dated value. Now, before I hit the refresh button to pull that information. Let me maybe change uh, another cell uh, on the same row. Say for example, the, for the month of October, the value here is 4,000. 
Now let me make this to 5,000. I will not even save this change before I refresh the value. So let me go ahead and so what I'm doing is I'm changing a different cell in the same row. Uh, and now I'm going to hit refresh. Let me, as the VP of North America, hit refresh uh, and pull the information from the Boardwalk server. So now let me, it's asking me to log in as VP. So let me log in this time as the VP of North America and hit OK. Now, uh, you know, once it pulls the information into my template, uh, we will again scroll to that particular cell and see how that information has got um, updated. So it has now successfully pulled that um, value. Now, if you look at uh, my template here, you see that of all the cells in my template, only this cell uh, is highlighted with a red tip, which tells me this is the only cell which got updated. Now, if I do a slight mouse over on top of this, it will also tell me that the value of this individual cell has, say, for example, changed from 300, uh, 3,850 to 4,001. Uh, and on top of that, you also see that uh, even though the, this record got updated, this value which I had changed from 4,000 to 5,000, and I did not save this value, that value did not get overwritten. And that is because of the fact that only this individual cell got updated and not the entire row uh, got updated or the entire you know, table, this entire sheet got updated. This, this is very critical and this allows uh, users, and this is again a very important feature of Boardwalk, uh, where we can allow users to do what we call concurrent editing, uh, unlike you know, other document management system and file management systems like SharePoint, etc., which forces users to check in and check out because they are managing information at the file level while Boardwalk manages the same information at its most granular form, which is at the cell level. Now, let me also show you the cell history uh, feature here. So if I click on this individual cell, and if I hit this cell uh, history button, uh, I can choose how far back in time I want to go. For example, I can choose a week, a month, a quarter. So let me choose a week. And if I click OK now, then it will pull the information of that individual cell as it has evolved over a period of time. Uh, say, for example, in this particular use case, uh, the last week. Now you see that uh, this is the value which we started with in our uh, session today, uh, which was 3,850. Uh, and this value was updated to uh, 4,001. And if you recall, this value was changed by, uh, say, for example, uh, the manager East row here, which is let me just expand this a little bit. So if you see here, this was updated by the manager east role here. Now, on top of that, uh, you also see that this value was updated at on 20th of September at around 11.43 a.m. my time. Uh, and this is the comment when the, which the manager made when they were uh, updating this particular uh, information where they had mentioned that, hey, this is my September forecast. And uh, now, uh, as you can see, that there is a you know, very powerful uh, you know, uh, audit trail of all the changes uh, which are being done uh, and updated by uh, you know, the users or the application. And just like, say, for example, uh, uh, you know, in this particular uh, session here today, uh, this information has been updated by the user. But say, if your backlog quantity, your billing quantity, uh, Etc. They are being updated by some uh, integration job in the back end. You know, you can also see, uh, you know, as they get updated and you do a cell history, you will see that, uh, you know, this information got updated by your ERP system or your CRM system. Uh, and again, uh, you know, here I'm showing you the collaboration between two users, but now you can very easily imagine, you know, 10, 20, hundreds of users who are participating in this process, as Sean was mentioning. Uh, you know, many of them could be sitting across the globe in different time zones. And as they are submitting their data, um, uh, you know, all they need to do is hit a submit button. And from an end user perspective, all you need to do is go and hit this refresh button. And with the click of this refresh button, you can pull that information from your, you know, hundreds of users who are participating in this uh, process and other systems and application into your uh, you know, template quite uh, easily. So with this, you know, um, I kind of um, 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 concluded what I needed to show. Now, there are various other aspects of the tool. For example, we have features like what we call 
you know, the periodic shift, etc., where uh, if there are certain time buckets, say for example, here you see the way uh, in this particular uh, template how the data is structured, like there is a monthly bucket with some, in other you know, system it could be a weekly bucket or a, or a quarterly bucket, then uh, you, know, you can decide uh, at the end of the quarter or the end of the month or at any you know, certain predefined uh, time or events, you know, certain periods can be logged in, you know, additional periods can be added, uh, you know, his history periods can be taken away from your template. All that becomes extremely uh, automated with a click of a button or in some automated form it can be done where the user need not, uh, you know, go ahead and add additional periods at the end of the month or at, at the end of the quarter. And all this makes, you know, this, uh, the process extremely handy. So with this now, let me very quickly cover one additional slide and then maybe I'll hand the session back to Heather uh, for some Q&A. So, you know, one point which I very quickly wanted to highlight uh, is the power of the connected Excel. You know, many of the organizations, including Coke, Apple, Levi's, uh, users find this aspect of, uh, you know, boardwalk where we are able to pull information from different sources into your template and, and uh, render it into the user in the form and the format in which it is required. So very handy. So, for example, this is one uh, integrated SNOP process which we developed for the leading, uh, you know, payware company. Uh, as you can see, uh, I know this is a slightly busy slide here, but we pulled information from, uh, you know, Oracle. Uh, we pulled almost, uh, you know, different details like your, um, you know, item uh, related information, backlog details, billing details, currency conversion details uh, from almost 13, 14 different tables in their Oracle system. Uh, on top of that, we also pulled in information, so for example, the opportunity details uh, from um, Salesforce. And again, depending on the role, uh, the granularity of the information could be different. For example, in this particular use case, the sales rep and the sales op team, they were working at a very granular level of data where, so for example, at the item customer month level details, uh, they were looking at the data while the demand planner was looking at an aggregated view of the same data set once the consensus has been reached between say the demand uh, between the sales rep team and the sales op team that number then got pushed into the demand planner template which had a much more uh, you know aggregated view and they made their their adjustments on top of those numbers and finally uh, you know once they reached consensus then the demand number was pushed back uh, into oracle uh, for their you know supply planning cycle to begin so, you know, as you can see here, uh, and this is just one use case uh, which we have done, uh, you know, we become extremely powerful uh, in a source where we become a hub of the data gathering. We become a kind of information exchange system where you are pulling, pushing information uh, from different system, rendering it to the end user, and then, uh, you know, uh, collaborating on top of that. So with this now, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand over the session uh, to Heather and see if, um, you know, uh, there are any questions for us. So Heather, it's up to you. Okay, thanks, Vivek. Uh, we do have several questions. If I don't get to your questions, I will email you at the end of the session. Uh, I've been actually trying to answer questions as we've been going. We have so many great ones. Uh, so the first question um, is actually for Sean. So Sean, before using Boardwalk, was ACES primarily using Excel for its forecasting and allocation process? If so, was there a huge change uh, management needed for, for implementing Boardwalk? Okay, so uh, yes, we were using Excel and we were emailing Excel files back and forth. Uh, once we implemented Boardwalk, if I am understanding the question correctly, no, there wasn't a huge change management. Um, people were still doing their same roles. The difference was that everything became a central hub. Okay, great, great. Uh, and the next question actually is for you as well, Sean is uh, we are also using Excel and email for forecasting, but managing it creates a lot of problems with versions, people working with most recent data. How did it help you with these things? Well, I think I I skimmed over this. Um, when you log into Boardwalk, before you start working on anything, if it has, it will ask you to refresh your sheet, and then uh, when you do that, you're going to be on the most up-to-date version of Boardwalk as of that second. Um, so for us, it helped a lot because we ended up not having anyone who was using outdated sheets anymore. 
um, just because everyone was on the same version. Okay, great. Uh, so the next question is for Vivek. Uh, Vivek, Excel limits one user in a file at a time. Using Boardwalk, does it allow for more than one person in a file at a time? Yes. Um, so as I was mentioning earlier, you know, Boardwalk does allow uh, you know concurrent editing, uh, and that is made possible because of the fact that uh, we are a cell version database. Now, um, as I was trying to uh, highlight in my demo today, is that when you know your Excel uh, spreadsheet gets updated, the Boardwalk template gets updated, uh, rather than dumping the entire data set, what Boardwalk does is the Boardwalk application is intelligent enough to understand what values have changed since the last time you had uh, refreshed or pulled the information from, say, the Boardwalk database, and it only updates those cells, uh, you know, which, um, uh, which has been updated uh, in the backend system by some user or other application. So uh, we do allow concurrent editing. Uh, now, uh, a corollary to this is, say, for example, what happens uh, if two people are, say, updating the same cells? Now, having implemented you know, hundreds if not thousands of processes, we have rarely encountered this use case where the same cell is being updated by, uh, you know, two users almost at the same time. Because typically because different roles have different, you know, um, um, responsibilities and they typically work with, even though they might be participating in the same process, they might be working on different ranges of data. Now, in this theoretical use case where, say for example, the same cell has been updated by uh, two users, you know, as you saw, that we keep uh, a history of all the updates, so you can always see. But by default, the behavior of the application is that it allows the latest change to win. So, for example, you know, if you updated the value to 10 and somebody else updated it to 15, when you refresh, you will see the value change to 15. But if you look do the cell history, you will see that your change has also been logged and tracked. And on top of that, we can always uh, also have certain rules where you can say you know, whose changes wins if there is a conflict and things like that. Okay, great. Um, and then the same person also had the question, um, if it, does it work, does Boardwalk work well with pivot tables like cell history? Uh, sorry, so the question is, does the Boardwalk um, allow pivot table? Um, uh, does it is that work what well the question with is, Heather? Tables? Yeah, so they're, uh, they're asking, does Boardwalk work well with pivot tables like like the cell history? So if I'm understanding the question correctly, yes, as I was mentioning earlier, we, uh, you know, do not, um, so, so all the features, functionalities of Excel, for example, if you need to, um, uh, you know, create pivot tables, et cetera, just like uh, in your normal Excel file you do, you can continue doing that uh, in the boardwalk template as well. Uh, and as, say, for example, your cells get updated uh, when people hit refresh uh, and your cell get updated, all you need to do is refresh your pivot table and you will see, uh, you know, the data in the pivot table also um, very easily, uh, you know, changed and reflecting the latest change uh, which has happened in the template. Okay. Um, the next question is, uh, we use Excel not only for demand forecasting, but also used for budgeting, account planning, commission management, et cetera. Can Boardwalk be used for these things and are other companies using it for these processes? Yes, uh, so that, that's a great question. So, you know, again, as I was mentioning earlier, and, you know, if you recall, uh, in my initial uh, few slides, uh, you know, I did share some of the sample applications. Uh, so, you know, I, as I had mentioned, we are absolutely agnostic to what process uh, you are building um, in Excel. Uh, you know, if you recall, you know, organizations like PricewaterhouseCoopers have built an entire taxation platform uh, on Boardwalk. Uh, while other companies, they build an SNOP process or say budgeting process. A number of companies, in fact, incidentally, do use Boardwalk for budgeting process. You know, organizations like Brocade, uh, et cetera, we have built, uh, you know, their IT budgeting process they are managing using, uh, you know, Boardwalk. So, yes, to answer this question, is any process which you can model in Excel, you know, you can leverage our product. And, you know, we have you know, many, many different kinds of applications. Sometimes we also wonder, uh, you know, the kind of work people do with Excel. And, um, you know, we are, we are fortunate enough to many times see these um, latest models. For example, when we work with some of the financial industries uh, where they are building, say, for example, uh, risk management 
uh, applications. They are leveraging Excel a lot, and we have we are in the process of working with some of the very you know cutting edge leading risk management uh, you know banks, agencies, etc., uh, and building these applications for them. Okay, and I'm, I'm just going to try to squeeze in um, one more question. Uh, can we push data from our demand planning process to, uh, to downstream processes like capacity planning and supply planning with Boardwalk? Uh, yes. So uh, again, uh, so it, it, it's quite. Uh, so if you see this particular slide, which I'm showing currently uh, in my um, you know uh, screen right now, this is indeed a process where you know uh, the data from the uh, sales and demand forecasting process got pushed to a downstream process uh, like your capacity planning, you know, supply management, etc. Uh, here we are putting pushing the, uh, the data into Oracle, but many times if your uh, you know capacity planning process also is on Excel and say for example you are using Boardwalk, then you know you can just push the information from one uh, you know Boardwalk table to another, or in this particular use case from Boardwalk to some external. Um, application like your uh, you know ERP system so that again indeed can be done okay so I believe that's all we have time for I do want to take uh, a moment and thank Sean uh, for, for taking the time out of his day to to speak on our behalf Sean it's been awesome uh, planning this webinar with you and we really appreciate it again thank you um, and also, if any of you have any extra questions uh, or want additional information, please email info at boardwalktech.com. All right. Thanks, Heather. And thank you, Sean, again. Uh, and again, uh, thank you all. And enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.